Hey guys, Hopping Hands here, and this is my top five wish list for Company of Heroes 3. Let's begin. Number one, an Italian faction. So guys, over the years for Company of Heroes 1, that came out in 2006, to Company of Heroes 2, which came out in 2013, we have not seen an Axis faction that was not the Germans. Company of Heroes 1, we saw the Wehrmacht and the Panzer Elite. Company of Heroes 2, we saw the Ostir and the Ober Commando West. Company Heroes 3, again we will see the Wehrmacht, but will we finally see an Italian faction or perhaps even a Japanese faction? This is something high on my wish list. I would love to play as a different Axis faction other than the Germans, and I'm sure many of you do too. How would the Italians look like, potentially though, for Company Heroes 3? I've got here, with me right now, a game called Sudden Strike 4, which I would highly recommend you guys check out if you're also looking for other World War II strategy games. And in this game, here you can see you can play as the Italians. Um, loving what they've done with the uniforms here, they look very Italian. You can see he's got that typical feather that officers uh, used to wear on top of their helmets. So, sound very Italian as well. And you can see some of the, 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 the vehicles inside the, inside the game. So you've got Fiat, uh, Fiat 634N fuel trucks with their Italian flag on the side of them. We can come over here to this other side. We can see that we've got a auto blended armored car. So this could potentially be maybe the, um, the equivalent of maybe a, a 222 um, for, for the Italian faction. We've also got ourselves a Breda M35 anti-aircraft truck with a um, sort of like a anti-aircraft weapon on top of that truck, which would be kind of a cool light vehicle. And over here, we've also got ourselves Fiat M1340 medium tanks. So definitely, you know, the, the, the Italians have got access to um, some decent vehicle, a vehicle roster that they could pull from. So guys, we can also here refer to War Thunder as examples of what maybe the Italians could bring to the field in terms of their, their vehicles. So here we have access to, for instance, the P-40. So kind of a late game, maybe medium or heavy tank that they could, they could field. Kind of looks like a, similar to maybe a T-34 or a Panther in terms of its look. Uh, they've also got access to potentially a Breda 501 over here, which looks awesome. Uh, looks like a almost a Flak 88 on, on, on as a half track, for instance. That would be a really cool vehicle to see in uh, Company Heroes 3. And plenty of other vehicles you can see here earlier on in the, in the tech tree that potentially that the uh, the Italians can pull from. Number two, optimization and top tier graphics. So optimization. If you've played Company Heroes 2, you've had to experience and endure the pain of bad optimization for many years now. Company Heroes 2 main menu has been notorious for lagging so badly and giving people only a few frames and making it hard to navigate. Also, Company Heroes 2, when the, when the action gets hot and there's lots of firestorms, smoke being dropped, tanks blowing up, the FPS really starts to get poor especially if you try and run it on higher settings. Even if you've got a top tier graphics card, it won't run Company Heroes 2 very well because it's just so poorly optimized. So here you guys can see that I'm getting an average of only 45 FPS, even though I'm not streaming, got the graphics completely on full, and I've even got myself a Founders Edition 1080 graphics card, which should be more than enough to handle Company Heroes 2 since it came out in 2013. So guys, in this next clip, I'll just show you here exactly what I was talking about earlier with fire for instance, causing FPS to drop dramatically. As you see, once the fire is on the ground, you zoom into it, the FPS drops down incredibly low to like one, two or three FPS, and the game becomes pretty much unplayable. Even in panning just slightly across the screen, um, fully maxed out in terms of your zoom, you're still gonna massively drop your FPS compared to normal. So there you guys go. Optimization, very important for Company Heroes 3. You need to run everything smooth so that it looks very impressive when people watch uh, Company Heroes 3 on streams that it, it, show, it shows the game off in the best available light. Uh, you can see awesome explosions without being interrupted by poor FPS and unit responsiveness needs to be very uh, smooth as well and tight. So guys, graphics are very important, I do agree, but I still think Company Heroes 2 graphics hold up quite well in today's standards, um, so I'd rather Relic put more of their time and effort into making the game better in terms of the optimization over graphics, but, you know, I would love to see, um, you know, cooler explosions and things like that, and, and uh, you know, it's also very important to maybe attract a new audience as well, for people to be like, wow, that game looks next gen, that's what we'd like to see. So like, when I ever first uh, played the game Witcher 3, I thought, wow, I saw Witcher 3 as like a benchmark for like, you know, next gen games when I first played that. So I would like to see if Company Heroes 3 could have the same kind of wow impact um, and as that will attract a lot more people into the game. Number three, more game modes. 
So guys, in Company Heroes 2, there are two major game modes, which were Victory Point and Annihilation. With Victory Point, players must whittle down their opponent's Victory Point count all the way down to zero to win by controlling three, potentially up to five major important Victory Point locations on a map. And in Annihilation, all you need to do in that, in that instance is destroy all your opponent's base buildings, including the HQ building, and that will count as a victory. Company Heroes 1, however, had other official game modes introduced in the expansion Company Heroes Tales of Valor. They had three operations, Operation Stonewall, Operation Panzerkrieg, and Operation Assault. Let's start with Operation Stonewall. In this game mode, you start with a base, one base structure, and you've got some other buildings around that you need to keep alive. If they get destroyed, you lose extra bonuses. It's kind of a like a last stand game mode. We have to survive increasingly harder waves of enemies from different Let's directions and sometimes even multiple directions at once. So here you can see this building increases the population cap bonus if you keep that building alive. This other building helps for increased vehicle repair. This other one is for extra manpower. North sector recon so here you can see the first wave coming in preceded by smoke and then infantry rushing forward. And so these waves get increasingly harder, making it a lot more difficult. And if you survive up to 16 waves, then you'll win this game mode. Next up is Operation Panzerkrieg. In this game mode, you are allowed to choose one of three tanks from light, medium or heavy tank. They all have their own special uh, abilities they can be upgraded with. As you play, everyone micros a single tank and it's just a lot of fun. You can directly control the tank as well and get it to aim in a certain direction. The vehicles can capture points. And these points give you specific bonuses. So here they look like victory points, but once you capture them, you get access to uh, infantry call-ins uh, and also off air artillery abilities, as indicated here. Also, if you return to base, you can get repaired by repair engineers at the, at the main vehicle factory, as well as the Panther terms there that will shoot enemy vehicles, making it a safe place to be able to park your vehicle and go for repairs. This game mode was incredibly enjoyable uh, back when I first played Company Heroes Tales of Valor. And I'd absolutely love to see it make a return in some form in Company Heroes 3. The final game mode was known as Operation Assault. And here, you would select your bunker and you would spawn in a single hero unit. Could be a medic unit, a pioneer, a sniper, a stormtrooper, a motorcycle, or an officer, things like that. And the objective was to push towards your enemy's bases, clear all their uh, MG bunkers, which would then kill the enemy bunker and you just go and kill their main base. It kind of similar to something like um, League of Legends almost. Each side has creeps in the form of infantry and need motorcycles and things like that and later on tanks uh, and they'll be able to push forward and uh, help you destroy the enemy defensive lines. And obviously the more units you kill the more veterancy your unit will gain and therefore the more lethal that unit will become. So here your, your hero has three abilities to choose from, from the get-go, and when they vet up they get, an, you know, to, to choose another ability point. And it's either they can upgrade uh, offensive, or defensive veterancy, or their grenades. And you can see here, by taking out the enemy's fuel dump in their main base, we have won the game. Also, with Company Heroes 2 and the introduction of the Steam Workshop, a lot of community modders help create awesome game modes like this one we can see here, which is the Company Heroes 2 All Units mod which I believe added over 171 additional core units for people to play with, which is very enjoyable, taking things from Company Heroes 1 as well. So here we have a game mode called Population Cap, which allows people to get increase their population cap all the way up to 500 if they want to do so, which allows for tons of units in a match. Another one here, Operation Spearhead mod, which it makes the game a bit more realistic. So in summary, guys, I definitely want to see way more official game modes for Company Heroes 3, whether it be official game modes from Relic or community made ones as well. Uh, the more the merrier, because we're all a bit tired of having to do standard game modes, which is Annihilation and Victory Point. It would be nice to have leaderboards as well for these game modes to see uh, who could be the best. So it's not just um, pure PvP. It could be like last stand modes against AI, which, which will definitely appeal to a much more broader audience there. This leads nicely on to my fourth point, which is about having great modding tools. Why do I consider modding tools so important? Well, just look at Dota 2. That came into being through the modding tools of Warcraft 3 back in the day. And therefore, you know, who knows what could be created by the community for Company Heroes 3 down the line. Could spawn a whole new franchise, could be amazing. 
Just think of also Company Heroes 1, the different type of game modes you had there. You had a World War 1 mod. You had, I believe, um, a modern combat mod as well, with people completely altering the, the units and skins of all the units in the game, and even the buildings and stuff as well. Company Heroes 2, unfortunately, the modern tools weren't as good as in Company Heroes 1. Uh, you weren't able to change the infantry skins in Co. 2, and you weren't able to change, like, the files for, you know, the audio, the... Um, and other important aspects like uh, the skins for structures, um, like projectiles, things like that. You weren't able to do all those kind of the changes that were was possible in Company Heroes 1. Uh, and so in summary, modding tools allow the community to keep the game fresh for years and years. And hopefully that will be the case with Company Heroes 3. For hopefully from new unit skins to new vehicles and even structures, maybe even completely different theatres of war, there is endless opportunities when it comes to modding tools. And that is why they are so important. Number four, customizable skins. In Company Heroes 2, guys, you were able to change your vehicle skins, but not your infantry skins. Here you can see there's an in-game store where you can purchase um, additional skins for your units, if you wanted to do so. And you also could add a currency system up here, supply, um, which you could also unlock to buy certain skins in the line, down the line if you wanted to do so. So you can see here, um, you can purchase... For instance, these, these Soviet skins, if you had enough of this currency, and you earn this, this currency just through playing. I like the idea of having an in-game currency, um, as it encourages people to keep playing the game to keep unlocking more future things. However, I would definitely like to see other ways of requiring skins. Also, not just for vehicles, I would like to see, obviously, uh, infantry skins and structure skins, as well as vehicle skins in Company Heroes 3. So to unlock extra skins and unique skins, I would tie them to certain challenges or achievements or uh, objectives. For instance, let's say we get a Tiger Tank and you manage to get over 100 kills with that Tiger Tank. If you do that in a competitive match, you will then be awarded a specific skin. And whenever you see somebody with that skin, you will know that they have completed that objective. So it's some kind of bragging rights to be able to show these certain skins off. Maybe you manage to make it into the top 10 in PvP 1v1 you unlock another skin. Let's say you were number one in the world at the British faction in Company Heroes 3. You should be able to have a specific skin to show that you were able to be, able, you, that you achieved that. And I think that would be, do go a long way to helping people um, try more and try harder on the ladder uh, because there's more to work to other than just a one and a specific badge by your name to show that you've, you've, you are a top level player it would be cool to be able to see having a cool skin like that in the game only available to you because you were able to achieve that also for pve players people like playing against the ai there could be objectives and achievements for you to unlock skins let's say you for the first time you managed to defeat an expert ai they you get a certain skin for that let's say they introduced the operation stonewall mod again and you survived the 16 waves there you get an achievement and skin for that so loads of way to increase people's playtime in Company Heroes 3 that's available through the use of skins and, and rewarding players through skins and all different types of things like that. Maybe medals as well. I mean, the, the you know, you could do so much with this. Um, and uh, yeah, the more people are rewarded for completing certain and challenges and stuff, I think the better. And last but not least, number five, in-depth PvP systems. So what do I mean by in-depth PvP systems? Well, let's take a gander at StarCraft 2 and let's see how Company Heroes 3 can learn from that game. So here we have an image taken from StarCraft 2 and as you can clearly see here there is a torment actually embedded in the game itself. So you haven't got to sign up to a third party software or go onto a website to sign up to a torment. You can do it all within the game and players who want to create torments can do it within the game as well. It's just great to have everything in one place. It makes it a lot easier for everybody involved. So here you can see the map veto process also takes place within the game. And furthermore we even have leaderboards that are even weekly and once that week is done, they are then archived for future generations to look upon and see how people shaped up and maybe improved over the years. Also note, there is different tournaments for different leagues. So in StarCraft 2, uh, you've got, for instance, the Bronze League, Platinum League, Diamond League, Master League, Grand Master League, loads of different leagues. And all players in those leagues can play in certain tournaments up against people of similar skill level. You won't have someone playing who's in a bronze league that will be able to get into a platinum league, for instance. Um, so there you guys go. It's just a great way to help cater to low level players and all the way up to high level players. So one major issue that people find uh, that they get when they try and get into PvP for the first time is they have a big anxiety of losing. The fear of losing when they when you jump into auto match because they're scared of playing someone better than them and they get destroyed and they'll feel bad, basically. You know, I mean, I've had it. I know many people you know who are high level players as well that have had it in the past. 
So, um, you know, the way to get over that is obviously look, just keep doing it, keep practicing, and then you just you don't feel it anymore, really. Um, but in this instance, for low-level players, by having these these different leagues for low-level leagues, you'll be, they'll be playing up against players of similar skill level. So therefore, um, they'll have a lot easier time uh, against playing those guys. So they're more likely, therefore, to, to want to play PvP, right? Once, once they get a taste of it and think, oh, I, I can actually beat this guy, um, then, you know, they'll be more encouraged to, to keep going. So another thing I would like to see for PvP, as I discussed previously, is the reward system for people who manage to make it to the next league or get, like, top 10 or first place. They get a certain skin, for instance, or maybe other rewards which could be given to them by Relic, which could be cool. Perhaps something like a commander portrait, and that has been done before. Players have got their own personal commander portrait um, when they've uh, won a tournament, so that would be a really cool incentive for people to play in tournaments. For PvP matches themselves, I would like there to be an opportunity to be able to reconnect to a match if you disconnect the amount of times that has happened to uh, friends of mine, teammates of mine, and then I'm stuck with a really bad AI. I mean, I mean everybody's had that happen to them before, and it really sucks because the AI is terrible. And then even then, being able to take over the AI would be a great a new addition to Company Heroes 3 because um, the AI tends to just throw the units away and then it allows the, the enemy to vet up free or maybe get free units in terms of like stolen weaponry, things like that. So yeah, I think being able to reconnect and being able to take over the AI player's units would be a great improvement for Company Heroes 3. And lastly for PvP guys, I would love to see a system for penalizing players that leave a match too early. So I'm sure you guys, if you've played Company Heroes 2, you've experienced this where players drop out early and that results in a really bad match or the, the rest of the enemy team it drops or your team end up dropping and then it's just like your two versus four players and there's no way of you winning so you end up leaving yourself. So it's just a, um, a horrible mess there and that happens way too often. So if you penalize players, let's say by 10, 50 minutes so they can't rejoin in another match, maybe perhaps they get a given a poor player rating. So that means they're known as a dropper and they'll be put amongst other people that drop all the time so they get to experience... Um, you know, that type of gameplay uh, for themselves because it's just not fair on people that want to just be able to play decent games even if they know they're up against stiff competition. And I always say, you know, you should always play against, de against better players because that's how you learn and improve. So guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the content, please do subscribe. I'll be sure to make way more Company Heroes 3 content in the future. And I actually have another top five video for Company Heroes 3 in terms of more things that I want to see coming very soon. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching, guys, and hope you have a good day. Take care.